Hey guys, my name is Jack. I make videos about all things tech. And today I've got another really cool unboxing to show you from Grid Studio. If you've not heard of them, they basically take old devices, old tech, and then deconstruct them into these really cool display pieces with all the component parts laid out and cleaned and sort of framed into this really cool art piece. Grid makes these with Apple tech, Samsung, Blackberries, Nokia, old game consoles, all sorts of old gear that no longer works. And then they turn them into these beautiful pieces of history that you can own and hang up on the wall. I'll link to them in the description. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this myself, but you can get 10% off when you spend $100 or more with code JCKRGB10 at the checkout. So go check them out. A couple of weeks back, I showed you the original first gen iPhone grid, and I'll link to that below if you want to check that out. But today I've got probably my favorite iPhone design of all time. This is the iPhone 4. And this just took the iPhone to like a whole new level. Just a quick bit of history. The iPhone 4 was first announced by Steve Jobs in June 2010 with a whole new design. The previous 3GS had a curved plastic body. The 4 had glass on the front and back now. A stainless steel band running around the outside with much more of a boxier shape. Kind of actually like the more recent iPhones, which actually take a lot of design cues from the iPhone 4. It introduced a lot of iPhone firsts, Apple's first retina display, doubling the pixels per inch to 326 for super sharp on-screen text and high-res images. Their first in-house chip, the A4, was brought over from the first-gen iPad over to the iPhone 4. A new 5-megapixel camera on the back, now with flash, and the first front-facing camera on the iPhone for selfies and, of course, FaceTime. I upgraded to the iPhone 4 when it came out from a 3GS, and I just remember it being this incredibly premium feeling device. It was so well made and sort of like so precisely engineered. It was just incredible, and even still today, I think it's one of Apple's best product designs. So let's take a look inside and unbox the Grid 4, and uh, we'll take a look around. This feels like Christmas. <laughs> Oh wow, there is the iPhone 4. It still looks so tiny compared to the modern day iPhones. It was still using, of course, a 3.5 inch display back then. But just to show you on the back, we do have some sort of little mount points here, little hooks. And it does also come with these little things, which I think you can use to hang this up on the wall without using like any nails. So let's take a bit of a look around and I've got my trusty Apple Pencil again, so I can point to some stuff. And it's kind of divided up into a few sections. So here on the left, we've got the front of the phone. Then here we've got sort of most of the main inner components. Here we've got sort of the main sort of chassis of the phone. And then on the right, we've got the back glass as well. So up here in the top left, it says iPhone 4 introduced in June 2010. This changes everything again. And this was sort of the main tagline that Apple used when they introduced this phone. So if we take a look at the screen first, the iPhone was still using a 3.5 inch multi-touch display with the iPhone 4, but by today's standards, it does still look kind of tiny. So if we put the iPhone 15 Pro next to it, we can see just how much phones have gotten bigger in recent years. But it did come with some really nice upgrades. It was the first display from Apple to be called a retina display, which is basically a bit of a marketing term, but it basically means it's a display that has a high enough pixel density that when you're holding it at sort of like a normal distance from your eyes, that it's impossible to discern the individual pixels. So it just means that everything on the screen, just you know, text and images, just looked so clean with the lines and sort of the high resolution. The screen was now 640 by 960 pixels, which was four times as many as before. And yeah, the display on this was sort of like mind blowing the first time you see it. And it kind of made it really hard to go to you know, a non-retina display or an older device after seeing it for the first time. We also have down here the home button, and up here we have the front camera, and this was the first iPhone to get a front camera, which sounds kind of crazy. Like, back then, before the iPhone 4, if you had an iPhone and you wanted to take a picture of yourself, you either had to ask a friend to do it, or sort of, you know, awkwardly turn the phone around and hope that you're in the frame. So yeah, this kind of changed everything for the iPhone, as it was the first iPhone with a front camera. And with that, of course, also came FaceTime, and that brought sort of high quality video calling to sort of, you know, everyday consumers. Because before then, if you wanted to do a video call on a phone, it was kind of done over cellular, like a cellular network at the time, and it was just not good quality, and it cost a lot of money. And, you know, this you could do over Wi Fi or your data plan, and it was just a really great thing to have. <laughs> the camera itself was 
okay quality. It wasn't, you know, amazing, but it was okay for its time. It wasn't even HD though. It was 480p at 30 FPS. So a long way away from the 4K60 that we have today. So we have the earpiece here, which sat just behind the top of the front glass. We've got the vibration motor, which always amazes me how tiny these things are, considering you know how much sort of force they sort of give out. But this was still before we had the haptic engine on the iPhone. Then here we've got the main board of the iPhone 4, including the A4 chip. And this was really quite a big deal, especially when you think where we are now with Basically, every iPhone has an Apple chip, every iPad has an Apple chip, and just now recently, the entire Mac lineup has just completed a transition from Intel chips over to Apple Silicon with the M series. So this was the chip that started it all, really. It was built on the 45 nanometer process versus the three nanometer process that Apple has just you know switched to with the iPhone 15 Pros. And this goes way over my head, like I'm not like a science, computer science person, but the newer chips are just so much more power efficient, so much more powerful, and yeah, they just enable so many of the computational features that the modern phones we use rely on today. Then moving on to the SIM tray, this was the first iPhone to use the micro SIM to have more space in the phone for other components, which is not quite yet the nano SIM that we use today. Still, if you have an iPhone that comes with a SIM tray, iPhones sold in America only use eSIM, whereas here in the UK and Europe, we have eSIM and physical SIM still. Then down here, we've got the charge connector which used the old dock connector cable. And yeah, as I said in the Grid 1 video, this cable, the connector was so wide. They then switched to Lightning with the iPhone 5. And now with the iPhone 15, we're finally at USB-C with a little push from the EU. Thank you, EU. But yeah, thanks Apple for finally adopting the standard that you also helped create. <laughs> then on the next section, we've got the stainless steel frame and the sort of inner chassis that held all the components together. The iPhone 4 was kind of like a sandwich design with glass on the front, glass on the back, and then this sort of metal filling, I guess, to hold all the components together. And if you look at something like the 15 Pro, and even you know before that with the 14, 13, and the 12, you can really see how these phones took a lot of design inspiration from the iPhone 4 with the metal band around the outside and the glass on the front and glass on the back. It wasn't without some controversy though, because you notice on the stainless steel band, there are these little sort of black cutouts. There's three of them around the band, and that's because the frame of the iPhone was actually part of a really clever piece of engineering where the frame was used as the antenna system for various different radios and you know wireless systems that the phone needed to function. But because of that, if you held the phone in a certain way, then your body would act as a connector between those two separate antenna systems and it would kind of you know mix the signals a bit. And you know, at the time it was called antenna gate, where if you held the phone wrong, as Steve Jobs put it, then uh, you could you know, kill the signal on your phone and the, you'd watch the signal bars drop down. It caused this whole big thing and Apple had to send a free case out to everyone. I remember I went for this black bumper case, they called it. And yeah, that sort of prevented you from being able to you know, cross the signal paths essentially and kill the signal on the phone. Then here we've got the sound button or the mute switch as it was probably more commonly known. And every iPhone up until the iPhone 15 had this switch on the side for muting and unmuting the phone. Now we have the action button, which you can hold to toggle an action. I've actually set it to run a shortcut that opens a menu with a bunch of quick actions that I can toggle. And if you want to see like a video on how I made this, then let me know in the comments below. Then down here we have the volume buttons. And I believe this was the first iPhone that actually had two separate buttons with the plus and minus. I think before that it had a volume rocker, which was like one long elongated button. But here, Johnny Ive really pushed the boat out when he designed this phone and gave us a separate button for up and down. Incredible. <laughs> then we have the power button, which used to be up here on the top of the phone. Now for a few generations, it's been on the side because it's just obviously a lot difficult to reach a button up here on these massive phones that we have today. So they moved it to the side so you can easily press it with your thumb. Then up here, we've got the headphone jack. This was back in the old days when you could plug in any of your favorite 3.5mm headphones directly into the headphone socket. This disappeared around the iPhone 7, which was around the same time that Apple introduced the first wireless pair of AirPods, which, you know, interesting that those two events happened at the same time. Then here we have the camera, and you can see just how diddy and tiny this little thing is. And this was still back in the day when we still just had one camera on the back of the iPhone. We're of course more used to seeing a whole bunch of cameras on the back of phones today, but back then we just had a single five megapixel camera. Now, because I actually owned the iPhone 4 for about two years, I still have some photos 
somewhere on my computer that were taken with this camera. So I'll try and put some on screen for you now. It was, you know, it was actually a decent camera for its day. It felt like this was the first time that Apple was really taking the camera on the iPhone quite seriously. It always used to just sort of feel a bit like an afterthought with the original iPhone, which didn't even have video recording, neither did the iPhone 3G. Video recording came with the 3GS. But yeah, I mean, you could take some fairly decent pictures with this camera that suffered a little bit from, you know, blowing out the highlights and being a bit too dark in the shadows. It did have some HDR processing, but you know, it's nothing like the processing done on you know, modern iPhones today. Then down here, we've got the speaker, which lived in the bottom of the phone. And we've also got a quote from Steve Jobs that reads, we're here to put a dent in the universe. Otherwise, why else even be here? So that's the iPhone 4, deconstructed into all of its component parts. Again, another really nice presentation here from Grid Studio. This was one of my all-time favorite Apple product designs. It was just so far above a lot of the competition at the time with the premium glass and metal design. It really just set a new benchmark. And even today, it leads to a lot of inspiration for the modern iPhone design. It's a really cool piece of history. And if you are into tech, then I think you'd really appreciate this. And as I said last time, I think these make for really great gifts. In fact, one of my subscribers, Ferno, you said that you were bought one of these, the second gen iPod Touch, I think you said, as a birthday gift and that that was your first Apple device. So, you know, I think there's a bit of sort of nostalgia in it as well, but it's a really cool way to sort of own a piece of history and then hang it up on the wall. Remember, you can get 10% off your order with code JCKRGB10 at the checkout on orders over $100. So check out the links in the description. They don't just have Apple tech. Take a look and see what they've got. And if you see something that you like, then pick it up because these things do come in and out of stock quite quickly as they have to source the parts and then put them together into these displays. Check out my Grid One boxing if you want to see the original iPhone by Grid Studio and also my iPhone 15 Pro Max review. If you missed it, I'll link to those in the description. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps the channel out. Let me know if you've got anything from Grid Studio yourself, what device you've got. And I don't know, if you had the iPhone 4, then let me know if you've got any memories from owning this device. It was definitely one of my all-time favorite devices I've ever owned from Apple. If you want to see more tech videos from me, you can hit subscribe and the bell. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.